History of the Yakuza Criminal Organization 17th to the 21st century The Yakuza are members of a Japanese crime syndicate that were founded back in the 17th century during the mid-Edo period. They very much see themselves as a Ninkyo Dantai, a chivalrous organization that prides itself on tradition, family, and maintaining a strict code of conduct. Whereas the Japanese police call them Boryokudan and see them as simply being a particularly powerful and violent mafia-style group. The name Yakuza was taken from a popular card game called Oichyo Kabu. When drawn together and added up, the cards 8, 9, and 3 equals Yakuza, making the worst possible combination. So Yakuza basically means good for nothing. The Yakuza can be traced to two main groups which originated primarily from the Kyushu Islands, the Tekia and the Bakuto. The Tekia were peddlers or traders of illicit goods. The Bakuto were gamblers and were largely involved in gambling houses. The name Yakuza was associated with the Bakuto. At first, these gangs were just seen merely as a dishonest group of delinquents who sold fake and shoddy goods. They began to organize themselves into families with the structure of a father, the Oyabon, and the sons, the Kobon. But by the 19th century, they started to band together and get much more organized, moving into loan sharking, extortion, and running highly effective protection rackets. They soon spread all over Japan and were divided into clans, each with their own head and specializing in different forms of illegal business. The pyramid-like organizational structure was a complicated one. At the top of the Yakuza syndicate was the Kumicho, also known as the Oyabon, or father, while everyone who follows him were the Kobun, or children. Below the Kumicho are the officers. The first was the Saiko Komon, or senior advisor. He has his own advocates, accountant, and gang of children. Next in the chain of command as number two was the Wakagashira, who carries out the orders of the Kumicho and governs several gangs in the region. And the third position was the Shate Gashira, who was the local boss. The foot soldiers below them are the Kyodai, or older brothers, and below them are the Shate, or younger brothers. Under these are the junior leaders, known as the Wakashu. The children can form their own gangs, therefore the entire clan can grow into a large group with a lot of subfamilies. The largest Yakuza family, the Yamaguchi Gumi, was founded about 1915 by Harukichi Yamaguchi in Kobe, Japan, and fully developed after World War II by Kazuo Taoka. Attention cadets, stay tuned for this lesson from our sponsor, NordVPN. We're here today to teach you all about the threats you face every time you go online. Take Cadet Jones here. He doesn't know it yet, but he's already under attack by Cadet Smith sitting next to him. Wait, what? Any moment now, he's going to realize that the very safe Wi-Fi he just connected to is in fact Cadet Smith's own personal network. He's already got his spies crawling in to attack. You tricked me. You've been subject to a man in the middle attack. Cadet Smith can now create your network on his PC. And next time you type in any personal information, like your password or banking details, it will go through his network first. He can even see what you've been doing instead of watching simple history videos. NordVPN will do the job for you, protecting you from Cadet Smith. Their threat protection provides a completely secure online experience with 100% data anonymity. By supporting NordVPN, you're also supporting these cadets as they carry on making content for you. Well, except for Cadet Jones, he's not going to make it through basic training. Sign up right now using the link in the description below. You'll get an exclusive discount on NordVPN's two-year plan, access to free anti-malware, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't be like Cadet Jones, get NordVPN today. By the early 20th century, the Yakuza clans had become powerful male-dominated entities moving into loan sharking, money laundering, gambling, narcotics, extortion, bribery, smuggling, violence, and running highly effective protection rackets. Alongside this, they ran legitimate businesses such as construction, movie studios, nightclubs, security, insurance, and real estate, taking on the form and practices of large corporations. Soon, they were making billions and billions of yen a year from a mixture of legal and illegal activities. Yakuza members were usually working class, high school dropouts recruited from common street thugs. They were often descended from Burakumen and ethnic Korean backgrounds who were outcasts in Japan's history. The Yakuza used a Sakazuki to formalize the initiation process of new members into the family where they must take a blood oath of allegiance. 
The ritual, often performed at a Shinto shrine, involved the offering of a cup of sake to the initiate and the Yakuza leader known as the Oyabun and to the gods, a process known as Sakazuki Goto. Sitting face to face, the Oyabun's cup was filled to the brim, while the initiate gets much less to indicate their different status. They had to swear a sacred oath to never reveal the secrets of the organization, to never attack another member's family, to not withhold money from the clan, to not fail to obey orders, and to not be involved with the law or police. And once you join the Yakuza, you are a member for life. For now, they become your family, and absolute loyalty to them was expected always. The Yakuza by now had become very ritualistic, seeing honor and loyalty as extremely important. There were several punishments for breaking the rules and betraying the clan, including lynching, Zetsuen, where the member was removed from the Yakuza family but was allowed to return after some time, and Hamondo, where the offender was excommunicated and was no longer allowed to associate with or do business with the Yakuza group, banished from the Yakuza world forever. The fourth most famous punishment for an offense was Yubitsume. This is where you were expected to cut off a portion of the little finger on your hand and present it to the head of the organization as a form of sincere apology. Starting with the tip of the pinky and amputating further if more transgressions were committed, Yubitsume worked as a powerful deterrent to betraying the Yakuza family, being both a painful and permanent consequence of doing wrong. It can also be used to avoid a conflict. It is said that this ritual descends from the Bakudo group where if a person was unable to pay the gambling debt they owed, then Yubitsume worked as a form of repayment. The weakening of the hand diminished a member's ability to handle a sword, as the little finger is used to grip the hilt. This in turn makes the Yakuza member more dependent on the protection of his boss. Group members also wore lapel pins with their headquarters or clan logos. There was also Irezumi, and this was a very important part of Yakuza culture. This was where the member of the group had an elaborate full-body tattoo. Popular designs included dragons, koi, tigers, and snakes. It was an extremely painful and expensive process, carried out by skilled tattooists using sharpened bamboo needles. The process was so intricate that it could take several years to complete. The Japanese government during the Meiji period banned tattoos to make a good impression upon the Western powers, so the practice continued underground and soon became associated with criminals. In fact, tattoos would become so strongly linked to the Yakuza that public hot springs and gyms banned customers that had them on their bodies, something that stands today. By the 1970s, Yakuza influence had stretched far and wide within the Japanese society, even extending to the highest levels of government, to such an extent that they were implicated in a bribery scandal involving the U.S. Lockheed Company and the Japanese Prime Minister. It is said that Yoshio Kodama, a powerful Yakuza, acted as a consultant and facilitated a $3 million bribe to get the Japanese to buy Lockheed L-1011 TriStar passenger planes and a large number of F-104 Starfighters jet aircrafts. The 1980s saw the Japanese economy boom, driven by massive exports to America and Europe. The Yakuza quickly capitalized on the opportunities this newfound prosperity brought, but this in turn led to infighting amongst the various factions in the Yakuza. Such conflict, though rare, often proved to be incredibly violent, but normally short-lived. Worrying for the police on this occasion, it quickly escalated to open, unrestricted warfare, and the factions seemed to care little about who got hurt in the fighting. In the Japanese city of Fukuoka, it got completely out of control, as gun battles between the various factions were becoming commonplace, and civilians were becoming hurt or killed on a regular basis. The police took a tough stance against the Yakuza, and the subsequent crackdown did not only bring about a public declared truce between the warring factions, but also marked the start of the decline in power and influence of the Yakuza, as the police finally took a proactive approach against them nationwide. In the 1990s, the Yakuza had moved with the times and become much more international, having formed alliances with various Korean and extremely violent Vietnamese gangs, as well as the Chinese triads. In the process, cornering the Asian market in illegal handguns and human trafficking. During the early 2000s, violence flared up again within the Yakuza, this time between two of the most powerful clans, when one side publicly assassinated a senior member of an opposing clan by ambushing his limousine using gunmen riding motorcycles. But a swift and strong police crackdown meant the violence never escalated any further. At its peak, the Yakuza clan members could number as many as a quarter million, but over the last few decades, their numbers have declined dramatically. 
Since 2011, there's been regulations that prohibit business with the Yakuza. Yakuza exclusion ordinances, which are aimed to eliminate the relationship of citizens with the Yakuza, have also been enacted. Changing attitudes, constant police crackdown, and the introduction of several anti-corruption laws in Japan has affected them badly. But this is not to say they are still not a force to be reckoned with. Having adapted with the times, they have spread overseas to other parts of Asia, as well as America moving into new developing markets. And in recent years, they have started to realize the importance of PR and in an attempt to improve their image, were heavily involved in providing disaster relief after the Kobe earthquake of 1995 and the Tohoku tsunami of 2011. This proved highly effective and has done much to increase their popularity in recent years.